All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the king of moths on social media, Bart Coppens. Today, my backyard in the Netherlands. I've said this before, but the insects in my country, the Netherlands, are smaller than what we usually see on this channel. I work a lot with tropical exotic insects, but today we are in Northern Europe, the Netherlands, my home country. Insects tend to be smaller here, but it doesn't mean that we cannot find interesting ones. So let's get started. Alright folks, now to me, the coolest catch of tonight is this single hawk moth. Yes, we do have hawk moths, of course, in the Netherlands. And they tend to be the, some of the biggest moths in my country. Now, this is a rather common one. Although, if you don't moth trap, there is a chance that you've never seen it before. Sorry, let's get a good shot on this, otherwise it can be hard. Ah. Here it is. It's an old one. It's, it's lost some of its color, unfortunately, but it's still very cool. So this is Dilephila elpenor. Um, it's the elephant hog moth. Now, we've done a YouTube video on them before. I've showed you their whole life cycle in captivity once. Remember that video? It's actually a gorgeous species with a pink underside. Huh. Of course, it's not very keen on being touched. And it may fly away due to my shenanigans but that's okay it may fly away as long as we can get a glimpse of the pink ah there it is that's just wonderful isn't it now in Europe we are kind of blessed to have this species because a pink hawk moth is kind of unusual like I've traveled the world and I've seen hawk moths on every almost every continent but the pink one is pretty unusual. Well, that's not true. I still have to visit Africa. But pink hog moths are pretty unusual. There's not many species that are pink. So in Europe, we are kind of lucky to have this one. They like humid areas. Let me zoom out. The host plants are uh, I believe willow herb, Epilobium, but also Fuchsia, and in more rare cases, Gallium or Bedstraw, and others. But their favorite is really willow herb, which grows in marshy areas and places where there's a lot of moisture in general. So this all adds up. Really beautiful. There it goes. I'm willing to wager this is most likely going to be the largest moth that we see tonight, but you never know. There are a few species in my area who are in fact even bigger. So there you go. Beautiful, isn't it? Now these guys typically only fly around midnight. And they are not common in my area. They can be common in some parts of the Netherlands, so I know places where you can get over a hundred of them in one night, but not where I live. I live in a degraded agricultural place with many orchards and intensive farming. As you know, farming is pretty bad for nature, sadly. It's the farmers that degrade the environment, kinda, and pollute it. There you go, it flew away. But I'm okay with that because we got the close-up and it may come back. It may land somewhere else. Was that a crow in the middle of the night? That's very unusual. I'm not sure why the crows are active. Anyway. 
If we look below the hog moth, we see hundreds of tiny white little moths. And these are the most common moth this season, I would go as far as to say, man. They are swarming incredibly much. So these are uh, true ermine moths. Like, there you go. From the genus of Iponomauta. And they even have their own family, I believe, the Iponomautidae. Um, I think, I'm not sure, I'm no expert, but I, I think the Netherlands has like 11 species of Iponomauta. Most of them look nearly identical. So if we zoom out the camera, you can just see how incredibly much there are, like all these white little things here covering the sheet. Or Iponomauta, can you see it? Like all these tiny thingies. Is all Iponomauta. Now I'm not really able to identify these based on their appearance. I think you need a bit of expertise for that that I don't have. Believe it or not, I'm not an expert in every moth species. So, But I do have the suspicion this is Iponomauta rorella. Because we have a lot of willow in the area. And the willows this year have been defoliated by the caterpillars. So I'm willing to wager this is Iponomauta rorella, the willow ermine moth. But I cannot be 100% sure. It could be there could be other species in here. Like I said, I think there's like 11 species of them in the Netherlands, and I don't recognize all of them just by staring at them. It's quite hard. Now this amount of moths is a good result for my garden. I've said it before, but I typically don't live in a place with incredible biodiversity. Although we do have some small forests and floodplains and parks and gardens. So thankfully I do get more moths in my backyard than the typical city dweller. But I still dream of going to like the dunes or a big forest in the Netherlands and moth trapping there instead. Now here we have a cute little mothy. It's about as big as my fingertip. There we go. Let's get some zoom on this one. Now guys, this thing here I believe is quite interesting. It's very common. I believe this is the oak marbled beauty, Drimonia querna. It's a rather common species associated with parks, woodland, but basically any pla place where there is beech or oak tree, which are its host plants. Of course, beech tree and oak tree are incredibly widespread here in the Netherlands. So yeah, species who are associated with them, who don't have too much demands from their environment except for the presence of their host plants. You're gonna see them a lot. Lots of species in the Netherlands eat oak tree. Oops, too much zoom here. It's a very typical notodontid moth. Interesting, Trimonia querna, remember the name. In the last episode, we've met the large yellow underwing moth, Noctua pornuba. Well, now it's time to meet a new species. The, um, I think it's called Noctua fimbriata. I forgot the English name for a moment. I think it's something called like the broad banded yellow underwing. It's kind of like a yellow underwing moth, except it's just more beautiful in my opinion. It's a quite beautiful species. I believe it has just one generation a year. There you go. But it's still rather common and widespread and its flight time is summer. I think like from July to September or something. Yay! Here it goes. It's, it's going a bit crazy I guess because I touched it. As the name suggests it has yellow hind wings which are very hard to show you on YouTube. Yellow hind wings, you only see it when it, it flies. Maybe we can annoy it a little bit. Aha, do you see that, the yellow wings? Yeah, that's right. This is gonna be very hyperactive footage. 
some of the moles don't really want to settle down and I don't blame them. Oh, are you going to settle down? All right. Show you how many species of yellow underwings we have in Europe. It's a lot. This is the lesser yellow underwing, Noctua comis. It's different from the large yellow underwing, judging by its size, of course, but also the markings are different. Once again, it's a very common species. Now, if you study moths in Europe, are you gonna do any moth trapping to study the native wildlife? Start learning your local Noctua species, because the ones from that genus tend to be the most common and the most prevalent. And almost anywhere, any place, to be honest, like, this genus is so important. Guys, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't seen anything rare or unusual. I was excited about the hog moth, but that's just because uh, of the size discrimination. Because the hog moth is not a rare either, it's just big. So it's more exciting, but the thing is, it's not always about getting rare things. Even though I admit, moth trapping is kind of like fishing. You're waiting for that one really elusive creature. This should be the Dunbar moth, Cosmia trapezina. And what's cool is the caterpillars of this one can eat caterpillars of other moth species. Although it's not an exclusive carnivore, they're actually herbivores, but also opportunists. So if these, the larvae of these moths, if they like encounter the caterpillars of other species on their food plant, they will eat them. Which is pretty unusual behavior still. There's not that many bl bloodthirsty moths out there. That one has carnivore tendencies. Yeah, this is gonna be a lesson in the common stuff of Europe. Here we see what is called a small magpie. Once again, a very common garden species in Northern Europe, at least here in the Netherlands. Their existence is associated with stinging nettles. And yeah, a stinging nettle, it's absolutely everywhere. It's one of the most common plants in this region, so these moths are uh, thriving. Of course, there's more to consider than how common the host plants are. Interestingly, there exist some butterflies and moths who use very common host plants, but they are still very rare. Because, uh, I guess they them have a lot of demands when it comes to their environments. But if you are a generalist and your host plant is a common, yep, you are in luck. Very beautiful, I like them. Even though you really get used to seeing them, it's still pretty cool. Here we have the pale prominent, also known as Pterostoma palpina. And the palpina part of its name refers to the palps that make up a little snout almost. As far as I'm concerned, they use host plants such as a willow and poplar tree. Fascinating. It's a cute little species, though, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder why its bulbs are like this. Such a strange but also really cool creature though. Wow. Very well camouflaged. And here we have the common emerald. He and here we have the common emerald. Hemitea astivaria. And what's really cool is it's green. Look at that. It has many host plants like birch tree, hazel, large, privet, apple, basically anything. I could go on. What's interesting is that the green color of this species is actually, I believe it's created by pigments. 
on my YouTube channel I often talk about the structural color coloration of butterflies and moths but in this case there is no structural coloration it's green pigment that's kind of cool it's a cute little species that is once again very common of course where I live nothing too unusual or rare but it's just cool to show you you know the common stuff from my country Emitea Arstivaria and what's really cool is it's green look at that it has many host plants like birch tree hazel large privet apple basically anything I could go on what's interesting is that the green color of this species is actually I believe it's created by pigments on my YouTube channel I often talk about the structural color coloration of butterflies and moths but in this case there is no structural coloration it's green pigment that's kind of cool It's a cute little species that is once again very common of course where I live nothing too unusual or rare but it's just cool to show you you know the common stuff from my country and this one right here is actually really cool it is called the blood vein Timandra come and I guess you can see why it's called the blood vein because it has really one very cool dark red line that runs along the wings but also the wing margins are like reddish so that's cool and like I said in Europe all the small moths have common names I find this to be quite silly and ridiculous especially after going to tropical rainforests several times where there's moths that nobody has ever even photographed them ever and here in Europe we're giving all of them common names even the small ones I believe the food plants include dog and sorrel so that's cool yeah folks this is also a really nice sketch this is a leopard moth Zezera pirina and it's from the Cossidae family which may include the giant goat moth if you've seen those before Let's see if it wants to sit on my hand Oop. now in the Netherlands this is what we would consider a really big species of moth that being said the females of this one are even larger this is a male and they are not very popular with farmers that's because the caterpillars of this species bore into wood of trees and this includes fruit trees such as apple, pear but also many many other trees I think like aspen, willow actually have a crazy amount of host plants and this makes them overpopulate in orchards and they're good at killing trees if the population density gets high although they target sick and dying trees first still it's a really nice catch then again who cares what farmers think right they're the reason the environment tends to be completely degraded in the first place especially in the Netherlands it's a nice species it can be locally common although many people go their whole life without seeing one of course your chances are higher to find it if you are moth trapping otherwise it's pretty hard to come across them just casually well, that's cool isn't it very pretty species huh wow definitely one of my favorites tonight very beautiful The 
This one is called the Oak Hook Tip. Also very fascinating. It's crazy how many moths there are in this world, aren't there? So beautiful, so diverse. I love it. The night would not be complete without the large yellow underwing. Be warned, you're probably gonna get these things every episode if I'm in the Netherlands. They're just that common. Look at that. Did you see the yellow underwings? Another oak hook tip. And it's camera shy, just like me. That's a joke. Obviously, I'm an attention whore. I made over 1600 videos and I don't plan to stop anytime soon. Anyway, there it goes, eh? Silly little creature. What? That's it folks, the sun is coming up. And therefore it is time to take the trap down. Moths need to stop coming if there is sunlight. It's summer and right now it's moth season and I have new moth trapping equipment in my backyard in the Netherlands. Hope to make a video like this every few days. If you like this video, I have one request. Go watch another one of my videos. It doesn't matter which one. I made over one and a half thousand videos about moths on this channel. I'm sure you'll find another video you like. That's my only request today. Watch one of my other videos. That's it. It's the end. See you next time.